A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we, the team of Petroleum Engineers Association, is delighted to organize a webinar session on the theme Kappa Workstation Application and Significance. We are very pleased to introduce uh, Mr. Shantanu Brajas, sir, who will be our speaker for today's session. He is currently working with Reserve Oil as a technical and marketing strategist for Kappa Engineering Software and upstream concentrated services for the Indian market and having more than eight years of experience in oil and gas domain. At this time, I would like to inform you all that there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. However, you can submit your queries related to the topic using the chat window on the screen. We'll also be posting the presentation of the webinar on our LinkedIn official page so that you can access it anytime and video on our YouTube channel. Now I would like Shantar to start the webinar by sharing the knowledge on Kappa Workstation applications and significance. Thank you. Sir, over to you. Okay, so I believe you guys can hear me. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, everyone. Sir. yes sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you guys are doing safe right now in such difficult times. So thank you, Nikhil, for a quick introduction. So to begin with, uh, I'll be talking about Kappa Workstation application and significance. So the agenda for today's session will be a brief introduction, followed by uh, dynamic data analysis. Uh, then I'll be talking about Kappa Workstation, what exactly Kappa Workstation is and what we do and uh, what's the application of it, followed by a Q&A section. So if you have any queries during the presentation or even after the presentation, you can just uh, message me or uh, I think uh, Nikhil will be there so they can assist me with the questions as well. Brief introduction about me. Uh, I'm based out of uh, Mumbai in Maharashtra. And as I mentioned, uh, as mentioned, I've uh, studied, uh, I've completed masters in applied earth sciences from uh, Geo Delft in Netherlands. So I have three specialization, reservoir drilling and production engineering. And as of now, I'm working with Reservoil as a senior reservoir engineer. Before that, I worked in uh, in Netherlands with a couple of companies, and I started my career as a well engineer, when I where I worked on managed pressure drilling. And now, over the period of time, I've switched my domain from uh, well engineering to the expertise in reservoir engineering, simulation, and technology. Let's begin with the presentation. So you must be aware of the current scenario. So since 2015 and 2020 now, due to pandemic, there has been oil crisis, which has enforced us to look back into all the old fields or mature fields, I would say, to go for the re-evaluation of those fields. Why are we doing it? What's the need of doing it? So we have started this our evolution. We have started uh, studying the deliverabilities of the well, properties, like what's the property, like skin, permeability, so that, that it can help, like if there's a positive skin, it can help us to plan our stimulation activities, what sort of uh, reservoir it is, is it like open bounded, closed bounded reservoir? So you can see on the right hand side, uh, can you see my cursor? Just a uh, question, I think you can see yes, it, sir. right? Okay. So you can see that over the production, how the, when the production declines for a mature field, how the operating cost increases. So as the field declines, their operating cost increases, which means the field won't be economical after a certain period of time. And after hitting the lowest bottom, hopefully in like uh, 2015, when oil prices went as low as $20 per barrel, it's very important for us to understand what exactly is going on in our reservoir and do the economic evaluation as well. So this is the reason why and how the software helps you. Because we can do almost everything in Excel. I'm, I'm pretty sure in your colleges or in your, uh, during your academic life, you would have worked on Excel. You would have done well test analysis using Excel. But what's the importance of using software? So I'll be discussing about the usage of software in the industry. Brief introduction about Kappa Engineering. It was founded in the year 1987. So that has, it has more than 33 years of uh, existence now. Fun fact is, uh, 
you know the kappa engineering was for by was founded by uh, ex shambhaje guy who used to work for shambhaje earlier and then he parted his ways and he came out with his own company and uh, he's still a managing director olivia hose and he is working he is the managing director of kappa engineering so you can understand like how he realized like how there should be something new that should be done in the industry now we have more than 105 employees with more than 20 plus nationalities major chunk of business of kappa is into the petroleum exploration software so we have kappa workstation we have kappa kappa uh, kappa server and uh, we have couple of uh, new uh, softwares will be coming up i'll discuss this in detail and the 10 percent of our business is into the consulting training and development work in today's presentation i'll be talking a lot about dynamic data analysis of dynamic data so what exactly it is i'll explain in my later slide but please make sure that you understand if you have any question related to it because this terminology is going to come uh, in the presentation later on as well so yeah and uh, we have more than 580 plus clients and with uh, we have mous with more than 150 universities across the world so you can see we have a pretty good footprint all over the world so what do you mean by as i mentioned uh, what is dynamic data analysis so dynamic movement of the fluid either it is from the reservoir or in the wells it is known as a dynamic movement of the fluid okay so when this dynamic whenever a fluid is injected or produced from the reservoir it causes a diffusion process right the diffusion produces changes in pressure and temperature data now this change pressure and temperature data is recorded in various places when we combine this data with the production data or the injection rate what we call the, the, the end result we get is what we call dynamic data so is it clear to you so we get a data we took the pressure and rate data we try to make the changes which have been recorded in the pressure and temperature data at certain points and when we combine this data with the production or maybe injection rates this gives us the dynamic data now analysis and modeling of this data leads to a better understanding of reservoir dynamics like what exactly is happening in our reservoir and well behavior which in turn allow us to may have a better decision making and proper forecasting so whenever you do the analysis part once you get idea once you get your input data we go for uh, decision making and which is very important now i think the oil prices are uh, still at 40 50 dollars per barrel so we do a proper economics before going into like if that field is going to be producing from that field is going to be viable or profitable or not uh the next two points we can see in the other color it's like intelligence fields because now we are talking a lot about automation and the big data where we have tied including artificial intelligence machine learning and uh, big data is like now from the wells we are trying to get more and more data and it's not about the present data we are talking about what we are doing right now is we are going back in the history we are taking the data out of that producing well and we're trying to match it so as a reservoir engineer it's very important for you to history match the data uh, i won't be going in detail but just keep these terminologies a little bit in your head so that when uh, during the presentation if you have any doubt you can ask me and we have another consortium in a cup of that is for the unconventional resources we call it kirk kappa unconventional resources consortium so it's like a group of companies which have come together who have uh, developed different module models and uh, we we what would they do is like they give us a case study we work on it and uh, based on that we have included this in our software now coming back to dynamic data analysis let me give you an example say for example if my manager walks in and say shantanu i need to go for a field development strategy so i'm i'm sure you must have studied what field development strategy is or field development planning is so basically uh, this presentation one more thing i would like to tell you this presentation is based on the perspective of a reservoir engineer so being a reservoir engineer myself what i'll do is i'll make a reservoir model 
and the economics model. So reservoir model will help me to predict the physical behavior, like what are my fluid recovery is going to be, what are my rates for operating condition, say for how many for, for how many time I will need a ply two production, and uh, so that my economics when I go for the projected economic information, I can get positive IRR and net present value. Uh, I won't be discussing about economical model uh, in this presentation, but let's talk about reservoir model. How do you how do you measure like how to make a reservoir model? You need a couple of data. How do you measure like what exactly the properties are? We always go for the coring job. You must have studied and you must have read like during the drilling process they go for the sidewall coring or they try try to take the cores out of the reservoir. So based on that core data, we do a couple of analysis in the lab equipment and uh, uh, the fluid which has been collected. We try to perform different experiments and uh, we try to understand what exactly is going on to mimic the effect of reservoir in the field. Okay, in, in the lab conditions, sorry. Uh, results of interpretation from, by this I mean we also take the seismic data. So when we get the seismic data, we process it. GNG team, like geologists and geophysicists, they seismic the data, they interpret the data, they process the seismic data, and based on that, they come up with a geocellular model. So for that also, you also need petrophysical data. So by this I mean, you take the data from logs, you try to interpret your uh, sands, you try to interpret your zones of interest, you try to estimate your porosity, you try to estimate where exactly is your hydrocarbon, so you try to interpret all these data from the petrophysical, petrophysical data. The third data, which is very important, is the well test data. Now, well test data is something that gives you an idea of the well and the near well bore area. So, you know, when we talk about like, okay, when you get all the data, you got the core data, but those are all, you know, the lab experiments data. That is like the core, Okay, I have, I have the core, I've done the core flood experiment. So I would have created reservoir conditions, but these are very important to understand your, uh, the effect of reservoir and how your reservoir behave over the period of time. Well test data is the only test data which provides us information on the dynamic reservoir behavior. What exactly well testing is, uh, that is not the motive of this web uh, session, but you know, I, but the main focus would be on like, why do we need to do it? Why, why we are not using Excel sheet? Why we are going towards migrating towards the software? So that's the main motive, main agenda. So this is the old stuff. Before Excel were uh, being used, what people used to do is like, they used to take the tracing paper and they used to, you can, and you, you must have seen, this is a type curve. And what they used to do is like, they used to try to get a match based on this, uh, the background. So type curves were used for the well bore storage and skin in, in, in a homogeneous reservoir condition. So anything in Y direction, that is, that is going to give you pressure match. Pressure match gives the permeability, which is thickness product. And time match in X direction gives the well bore storage. Now, this, this used to be a very long and very tedious process. It's nine, you can understand if you have like thousands of well test data to interpret it, you have to make a plot. You have to make a plot first and based on that, what you'll have to do is like, you have to move the tracing paper and you have to trace it. So that, that's the point where we decided uh, when uh, Olivier Jose parted his way, is that there is a need of the deployment of certain software solutions which can be used directly and which can do the interpretation for you. And that is where the Kappa workstation comes in. So we have uh, two products, main products. One is Kappa workstation, which we have like engineering modules like uh, Sapphire, Topaz, Ruby, Ambrod, uh, Citrine, Azurite, and Carbon, which is a new release. And Kappa server, it's again gaining a lot of momentum right now. It's a permanent downhole gauge data measurement unit. So what we do in Kappa server is uh, we places the data for PDGs in the well bore and everything is disordered in lifetime. So you get the pressure measurement, you get the pressure data, you get the rate data based on that. You do the analysis simultaneously. So even if you're, uh, if 
say for the off shows this is being implemented and even on the odd shows we you can implement this technology and uh, you can place the permanent downhole gauges in the in the reservoir in the well bore and then try to measure the pressure and uh, the changes in the pressure over the period of time so for the build up analysis or maybe for the drawdown test so whatever type of test you are trying to conduct you can do that so these are the main workstation modules which are available in cup so first is pressure transient analysis which is a fire case hole logging is mrod rate transient analysis is topaz numerical modeling is rubis field performance analysis is citrine formation testing is azurite and fluid modeling is carbon so in today's presentation i'll be talking about the fire i'll be talking about topaz and i'll be talking about rubis but i'll give you a brief introduction about mrod i'll give you a brief introduction about citrine azurite and carbon so mrod is basically when we go for the production logging jobs uh i believe you must have studied uh, you must be aware of what exactly plt jobs are so whenever you go for uh, whenever you want to know what exactly is the main contribution from which reservoir which zone so you go for the plt job so it's, it's one of the most important techniques that is being used now especially when you have very high producing water water wells where you have very high water cut so you use the mrod and uh, you try to understand um, we also try to estimate the channeling because we do the cbs cement bond logging so that can gives an information how the cementing job has been carried out and you can get a general idea like okay what it is uh talking about sapphire i think i'm getting some questions I can can you check if, uh, if if I'm getting some questions or something? Sir, so add class to window, sir. Uh, because I cannot see that window. Sorry, the questions. Uh, I okay. Let me. Uh, I'll just. Sorry. Sir, add class to window. Sure. Okay. let's discuss in the in the very last when when i'm done with the presentation uh what we do in uh, in sapphire is basically uh, we carry out the build up analysis we close the well where the rate is zero and we try to understand the pressure data and we do the pressure transient analysis this gives us an idea this gives us an estimate of the permeability the skin the boundary uh, you must have seen the derivative plots like how our derivative plots derivative plots look when you go for uh, the build up analysis now rate transient analysis uh, topaz is my it's my uh, personal favorite module so it's basically being used in lot of unconventional reservoirs when i say unconventional it doesn't stick to shale cbm you know it also sticks to the tight reservoirs so whenever it's not possible to go for the build up analysis when it's not possible to close the well and go for the build up analysis what we do in uh, topaz is we measure the tubing head pressure data we take the rate data and based on that we do the analysis part so there are a lot of uh, kappa's extension kappa we normally in kappa we come out with uh, we have collaborated with couple of researchers that has been going on like log log blacking plot is there so we have developed a couple of theory and based on that we do the analysis for what is the permeability what is the strain so you can get an idea and the functionality of uh, topaz is you can use it uh, for the decline curve analysis as well so again when we talk about uh, the conventional method of decline curve analysis is mostly you're talking about the arps plot but that's not the case in topaz i'll cover it in my later slide so we'll discuss like what exactly we do in topaz rubis is our numerical model so this is basically uh, something in between uh, tank model that is material balance and full field numerical simulation now when you have worked on a tank model you must have studied like uh, you must have come across that uh, the tank model assumes like you have a single tank and over the period of time you will be draining from the tank you don't include heterogeneity and in full field numerical simulation you need to have a proper geocellular model first like you need lot of input data 
like you need data from gng and uh, you have you need data from uh, the pvt data the core data the scal data so you need a lot of information now uh, if if it uh, if you want to go for a full field numerical simulation then you also need to have a little bit of production history so uh, are you aware of there was a provision from the government of india where discovered small fields were put on uh, sale so the private companies can go for it and those are basically the marginal fields and these fields had very limited data they were almost uh, uh, they have not produced even for like one or two three days so government of india gave it out for uh, the studies and that's the point where i have used rubis a lot because it was easy to load the contour map i could load the map i can make a grid and based on that i can create define the layers and uh, do a quick analysis so it was very easy to go on method whereas in numerical simulation i would have required a lot of input which was not possible so that is where we use do this uh, the fifth one is citrine uh, which is for the field performance analysis now citrine has been developed with the close association of kappa with uh, degloyer and magnoton so we have worked together and uh, it was developed for the unconventional resources where we try to understand the various effect the effect of various well in a field so we do the some some sort of field performance analysis we do the decline curve analysis and say what we do is like if there are 100 wells what we'll do is like we'll cover club like certain uh, similar wells together and then we can take the same model into topaz and do the type well curve analysis so this methodology this technique is quite successful and has proved to be very useful in unconventional like shale uh, what we do is like we do the type curve match and based on that we define which kind of decline curve method should be used the sixth one is uh, formation testing it's azurite so azurite is basically used to measure the pressure gradient and uh, for the reservoir characterization it's very important for us to know where exactly our contact is and the last one is the fluid modeling carbon which is uh, which is recently developed it's a part of kappa generation 6 we are in kappa g5 generation 5 right now so fluid modeling is by using carbon so carbon is basically uh, for your pvt simulations so we carrying out the flash experiment in the lab and doing the equation of state analysis it's it is just one of the most recently induced uh, module in kappa c so just to give you an idea here you can see that if we talk about x y axis so when i talk about the fire so the the area in blue can you see my cursor so the area in the blue gives with we use the fire for that which is a pressure transient analysis which gives us the area near the well bore around the well bore that gives us uh, in, uh, information like what's the permeability what the skin build up so if it's positive then we can plan our stimulation activities if it's negative then we can see okay it's fine and um, what is the permeability so you can get an idea plus you can also understand if if, uh, if there's a boundary so if there's an effect of fault or something so you know that so pad uh, again is uh, is in the orange so you can see that we since we can do a sort of small forecasting and it it covers a larger aspect and the one in red is uh, rubis we also call it a history matching and numerical modeler tool so you have the data you create a field forecast and you can create a full field forecast using rubis if you look into the xz section so the one in yellow is the formation testing data so whenever we do it we try to estimate the gradients and uh, we try to establish the contact using that methodology and the one is the the one in green is the pl which is production logging which is done by amrod using amrod so is it clear now i mean uh, i think uh, there are too many modules but i think it should be clear now looking after this image looking at this image so so earlier we uh, i'm not sure how many of you you have used uh, a cup earlier we used to call it ecren and uh, it was known as 4.30 which was the last commercial version 
and then we came to generation 5 in which we made lot of many we made many changes we have first of all introduced the user interface so that when i talk about you know when i say okay for the rubis i have to make grids across the contour map so i can do it like just by clicking and just making a contour on it so contour plot option is there so you can load load any image file you can digitize it you can make the grid and based on that you can do the analysis redesigning of the technical component is like we try to keep on adding inputs from which we get from our clients so for example um, we have recently uh, included flow behind the casing module which was the highly requested in our one of our analytical model by one of our client so we do redesign technical components now we have also included uh, volatile oil and uh, again we are working with uh, bisser fern lab the french company and ifp to develop a full fledged simulator so that can handle that has, that will have that can be used for eor techniques as well some of the users they said like we need to migrate to next generation so again in cup of we do try to understand we try to hear what your suggestion and comments are so any, if any one of you is using kappa workstation right now and if you have any suggestion you can reach out to us and uh, you can let us know if there are any changes if there are any bugs so we always try to make those changes select new technologies we have used dot net uh, for uh, redesigning our interface we have redesigned everything we have uh, we will see uh, i'll show you how the kappa workstation looks now and address architectural limits now this is very important part because earlier what we had in kappa is like uh, say if you have millions and millions of data points for your from your build up study now you want to do the analysis what we used to do earlier was you have to make new gauges every single time there was no option of appending the data by appending the data what i mean is say if you have loaded data from 1 to 100 and now you want to load data from 101 to 500 so you can directly append it even though if it's in different excel sheet or if it's in ascii format or in different format you can always append the data so this we have at address plus carrying out multiple analysis simultaneously in the newer generation in the newer version of kappa workstation you can carry out multiple analysis uh, i mean i personally normally start with a very basic analysis and then sometimes it can go up to like many like i don't have exact numbers but yeah you can do a lot of analysis and the best thing the best part is you can compare those analysis so for instance if you want to compare your analysis one with analysis three so you can load the data you can uh, you have already done the analysis there is an option you go to the compare option you click on that so just by clicking on it so that that makes it very user friendly and i can assure you i mean if you look into the kappa workstation when you start working on it you don't need to have any professional training on it i'm i'm pretty sure just by exploring it we have tried to make it very simple so you can get familiar with it and you can use it so this is how the kappa workstation looks now all the modules like sapphire topaz rubis citrine uh, emerald and azurite are there in the one panel and this is the connection to the kappa server so kappa server is uh, it communicates with if say you have a sql database or you have access database you can always link your uh, kappa server with uh, sql and access database or sometimes some companies what they have is like basically data historian so data historian in something that stores the data and that can be used for loading the data and merging the data right so you can see that so whenever whenever say for example if i'm working on uh, if i'm working on sapphire and if i want to work if i want to do the same analysis in topaz i just need to click on this folder option which is more of a browser option and based on that i can just drag and drop from one project to the another one so this is the kind of flexibility that gives that kappa gives you it's just by click you just click on it and you can just do it okay so let's talk about sapphire so which is our industry standard for the pressure transient analysis uh, i'm pretty sure we have more than 6000 of active licenses uh, as i mentioned there are uh, when you look into the left pane so it's we always follow the concept of top to bottom 
So you start with loading the rate data, you load the pressure data, then you go for the extract DP, which is which will give you a derivative plot. You can see it here, log log data, and uh, you can go for the deconvolution method. Again, it's very useful when you have very noisy data and if you want to come to any conclusion and it's not possible to do it. Then there are two types of modeling that are being done in Sapphire. One is analytical, which is purely mathematics, and another one is the numerical modeling. So this is how, uh, if you see, this is how my numerical modeling looks like. On the top pane, it's basically just, if you have scales, if you have PVT definition, so whenever you start any project from the blank, you start with creating a blank document, you load the information like PVT data, you give uh, major inputs like the radius, uh, reservoir radius, well radius, I mean, sorry, well radius, I, uh, net page thickness is how much porosity, water saturation, and then PVT, you go with uh, what kind of uh, reservoir fluids are there, either it's uh, dry gas or wet gas or it's a condensate, so we define all these options uh, from the PVT. I'm not going in detail because this is going to take a lot of time. So then we have tools. We have tools for the interpretation part, like what exactly are different uh, models, like reservoir models, well bow models. Uh, one thing I would like to tell you, tell you is uh, uh, when using the tools option, we have included and we have uh, inbuilt library of 54 analytical models in Kappa workstation. So whenever you install that, you always get access, get access to those libraries so that you can look into it and based on that, you can do the analysis. So methodology is the same with both the derivative and uh, as I mentioned, we have a Golding analytical model library. If there is something that is being observed in a lot of wells and a lot of fields, we try to include it in uh, in our uh, in our in our software, like now uh, we have recently in introduced Chow derivative, which is Chow pressure group, so which is again very important parameter for uh, the mature fields. Uh, we have automatic grading option, which is Voronoi. Voronoi, another name for Voronoi is unstructured grid. Normally, if you have worked on simulation, there are two types of grids: Cartesian and Cornell point grids. So basically, in uh, in uh, Sapphire, we use not only in Sapphire, but in Kappa, we use, uh, we automatically use uh, Voronoi grids so that, you know, when we, we take into the consideration of multi-phase and complex geometries, like you have fault with throw or dip is there in your reservoir, so you can uh, include the effect of that. So, uh, we have a integrated numerical model with the non-linearity analysis. Again, uh, this was missing earlier. So whenever we talk about shale gas or CBM, you must have uh, heard about the process for desorption. Uh, so we use it, so we have included this and uh, we have line mirror so term for this. We have test design, QQC and sensitivity analysis. QQC is one of the strongest part of uh, Kappa. So which gives you an action where you can delete some noises, we can remove background noises and uh, you can fine tune your data, you can always do it. Test designs are useful when you have, um, say, appraisal or exploratory well. Uh, you have absolutely no idea and you want to plan your um, well test analysis, like build-up study, then you can go for uh, test design. And sensitivity analysis is something you can do, like, based on different parameters, like skin, permeability, uh, now fracture length, if you have any. You can, based on different parameters, you can play around with it. The next one is uh, topaz. So topaz, as I mentioned, it's, it's mostly considered tubing at pressure data and the rate data. So again, as a, you can see that, you know, there is quite a similarity between the sapphire workspace and the topaz workspace. Everything is similar. So even if you go to Rubis or if you go to uh, topaz, so if you have worked on one module, I can assure you that you can work on the, all the other modules. It's very simple. You have, uh, we all again the follow, you start with loading the rate data followed by the loading the pressure data. Then you go for the derivative plots, deconvolution, and then you can see here as an option of forecast. So whenever if there's a small field with a single well model is there and you want to create a forecast say for the next 10 years or 12 years, you have this capability in Topaz that you can go for it. We have the same plots, log log plot and blasting aim plots, which, is, which are the industry standards for um, 
the unconventional resources and uh, we have been using it so you can see it so again the process is the same the methodology is the same only the data we are taking into the consideration is different in sapphire we take the bottom hole pressure data in topaz we are taking the tubing head pressure data okay so it's a, it's a leader in rate transient analysis uh, it's again when we have very low resolution of low frequency data where uh, in tight reservoirs where it's not possible to have build up studies then uh, we go for uh, rate transient analysis uh, abundance of data from the permanent gauges is the same point and uh, we can always go for a single and multi well analytical and numerical analysis so it's the same process you start working you load the pvt data you give the input about the field and then based on that you start working on it to just um, try to uh, have a normal decline curve analysis whereas it is a different case for the unconventional because that won't be valid for uh, when you talk about unconventional arc plot i don't think will give you better analysis so unique feature is the same as in pta is the consistency between all the modules and uh, now there were some certain parameters certain functionalities which are only specific to sapphire we have included this in uh, topaz as well so perin is the equation methodology used for the multi phase so whenever you have multi phase and say if you have all water gas and you want to estimate the permeability with respect to water all permeability with respect to water so you can use during that time you can use uh, perin equation deconvolution was was not there well bore storage was not possible because tight reservoirs normally you don't see to get um, uh, well bore storage phenomena that is like when you close the well you have a before the build up you can see a hump in the derivative plot but again we have included this reason because we have also defined uh, we have an option of defining the intake model curve where you can define the intake model so that the tubing head pressure data can be converted to the bottom hole pressure data and again seamless integration with citrine with the field performance analysis module so whenever we are doing the field performance analysis where we have thousands and thousands of wells and we want to interpret okay which well is our star performer and from which well we are getting a lot of water production so we try to integrate it with uh, topaz do the analysis in topaz and take the same project back to the citrine rubis uh, again it's a, it's a numerical model just in short introduction what you do is like uh, you can see it on the lower side this is a little bit of transparent grid we have created so for instance if you don't have any data and you want to go for a quick um, uh, development strategy where you know where your management can take the decision this is the software where you can you can use again if you have lot lot of data if you have well test data if you have rate transient data you can always include that in rubis and do make your analysis much more valid for example if someone asks me like what's the basis of uh, if we want to go and do the production from certain fields or not so to do the economics it's very important for you to understand the reservoir or field behavior so i can use rubis in that case do quick analysis and based on that i can submit my results and do the proper economics and uh, get my results so we can decide whether we want to go with the production or uh, not apart from uh, going for the development plan say if you have existing field and if you are planning for a infill drilling if you are planning to introduce new well then also you can use rubis for the same purpose you can load it and then you can you can see it on right it's, it's not very clear but you can see there is a there is a first thing you can see is the recovery factor so this you get a plot of recovery factor how much is your recovery factor over the period of time so you can do this so uh, carbon is a fluid modeling this is next and with new this uh, it's, it's more of a in the kappa g6 generation 6 which will be releasing in the first quarter of uh, 
2021 and uh, we have already uh, the, the commercial version of carbon is available so the best thing uh, as i mentioned it, it it has been developed by kappa under a consortium and the mou we have signed with ifp energy models this f1 lab and fdc consultants so it's a, it's a first copper generation six application it's a web-based user interface it has a web base so over the period of time as i mentioned earlier we are going more towards automation now people want to have everything on the cloud so this is this is one of our first product that we'll be migrating to the cloud so that we can use it and um, you know we wanted to see how it behaves as of now it has been very stable i've been personally using it myself as well and uh, that, that's the main motive over the period of time i think by g6 most of uh, the modules what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be putting it on the cloud and so that no one has to you know they can just access it, access it uh, from their workplace or from their home and even due to this lockdown everything has been shifted to work from home culture so i think it's a good initiative from our end and we are working on it it has commercialized with basic fun lab so basic fun lab they do have establishment in uh, uae and uh, middle east in couple of places in middle east and uh, they they do have a wide footprint whereas in india it is with us so reservoir is the indian partner of kappa so basically uh, if you have any questions or if you have any doubt related to carbon you can reach out to me and uh, collaboration with the field development consultants because again as i mentioned we try to try to get inputs from as many people as we can about about our module like what exactly they feel about it and uh, if there is any problem if there are any changes we want to do it and it's powered by fp and pvt library can not so we have taken we have collaborated we have taken their pvt library already and uh, we are working on it so this is my final slide so you can see that major enp companies in india are the client of kappa and uh, they have been working with us we have been working closely with them kane india ongc oil india reliance so they have been our client for uh, different modules and uh, yeah we have been getting very good responses from them so questions let's open the floor for questions thank you sir for your valuable time now we are moving towards the q and a session so our first question sir what mm -hmm. is preferred more analytical or numerical okay that's a very good question uh whenever whenever you talk about whenever we have the field uh if if say i have uh, i have absolutely no confidence on Uh, the test data which i have i'll start with the analytical model first of all that that is going to be my very first test it, it it can vary from person to person but that's what i prefer normally so when you start with the analytical model what you're doing is basically you are trying to use mathematical correlations and trying to establish uh, a certain behavior once you establish that you need to know what exactly and how you know there are certain properties uh, So I'm not going in detail, but there are certain properties that cannot be estimated by in detail only by using your um, analytical model. So the, that's the point when we go for the numerical model part, numerical modeling part. So basically, both of them are very important. You start with analytical model part, you do the analytical design, you do first analysis, and to validate it. Because even if you go for the numerical design or numerical model part, there should be much difference. so when say if i am getting a permeability of say 10 milli darcy i'm just giving an example in numerical model if i give something around 9.5 or 9.9 or 9.0 i mean so that should be okay so that should be fine yeah okay sir our next question hmm. so the kappa software is only give data about transient pressure or other pressure data uh normally uh, we try to take uh, uh, transient data into the study we try to understand the transient behavior of the field because that gives you a much better idea of uh, what is the permeability you'll be facing in your reservoir and uh, this is this is an important aspect now when we talk about mature fields specifically so uh, as i mentioned like when it's not possible to carry out uh, 
you know, build up studies, what we do is like we take the tubing head pressure data. The tubing head pressure data is something like we don't have to close the well. It's producing, we record at, at center certain intervals, like in weeks, in months, or in days, and we try to take that data. Whereas in build up, it's mostly based in hours, like one hour, two hours, six, 13, 36 hours, because for that period of time, you'll be closing your wells. When you're talking about the injection, like, you know, we need to understand that it's not only restricted to producers. When we talk about injectors, we need to see the effect of, uh, you know, if say I'm in injecting like 10,000 liquid liters of uh, liquid from one of my injectors on daily basis, I need to see if there's no skin buildup. Because at this point of time, it's very important for you to have a very good efficiency of your well. So by this data, you can get an idea. If you have positive skin, that means there has been some buildup. There are near the well board, there has some ruptures or you need to go for the stimulation or maybe the frag job. So yeah, so we normally try to take uh, the transient uh, data into the consideration. Thank you, sir. Our next question from Sil Patel. Mm -hmm. Why in tight reservoirs, tubing head pressure data is required instead of bottom hole pressure data? So as I mentioned, whenever you go for build up, uh, whenever for build up, what you need to do is you need to close your well, right? So when you close your well due to internal energy, there is build up and uh, which doesn't happen because in tight reservoirs, uh, the mobility is really, really low. So you won't get that build up. So even if you close your well for say 36 hours or 48 hours or even 72 hours, you won't be able to notice any marginal change. You won't be able to notice anything. So the point is, uh, let's not waste the production because when you close the well, you're losing the production as well, right? Because you're not producing from that well. So it's important for you to, let's say, okay, let the production go. We'll take the tubing head pressure data and we'll measure it with the rate and do the analysis part. So that's, that's the case. Normally, well testing is preferred for the conventional wells and uh, RTA, the topaz, we use rate transient. It's mostly for the unconventional like tight reservoirs. So it's not possible to build, to have build up. That's the reason why we take the tubing head pressure data. Okay, so our next question. Mm -hmm. Sir, in Kappa workshop, is there any unconventional reservoir modeling? Softwares are available? Yes, yes. Uh, we do have like Topaz uh, and uh, Rubis can be used for the unconventional uh, reserves. One thing I didn't talk about was DFN, discrete fracture network and micro seismic, which is being used uh, in the industry right now. So you can use uh, Rubis for the same purpose. And uh, as I mentioned, there is a consortia of uh, different companies like, uh, uh, so we do have uh, multiple fractured horizontal wells. So we do have all these case studies. It's, it's, it's the analytical library and the inbuilt library of uh, Kappa is very extensive. Because this is like from, uh, say, uh, if, if my client approaches me and is like, okay, Shantanu, I'm working on this topic and I need to include this. So we would normally try to include it because that is going to benefit everyone. So we have developed this uh, consortium. It was with Saudi Aramco, Shell, BP, and uh, Exxon. So we have worked together and we have developed these analytical models. So it, it is there. It is there. Okay, sir. So next question. Yes. So does petrophysical data includes geomechanics as well? Petrophysical data, again, uh, now uh, petrophysical data, when we talk about petrophysical data, it's something of different domain. Uh, we don't use it in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Kappa. But again, that uh, petrophysical data helps us to establish the values of porosity. And uh, say when you have no core data or no special core analysis has been carried out in the lab, we use to we can use that to establish a poro permeability relationship. So there are different standard correlations, uh, mathematical correlations like Timur correlations are there. So we try to establish a fact uh, using that. But then uh, that can help you to understand uh, uh, why do we need it. So that, that, that's a different, and uh, for the geomechanics part, um, I think uh, I'm, 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 I won't be the right person because it's, it's a different domain. So geomechanical strength, uh, again, you have different studies, like uh, we try to make mechanical earth models 
and uh, there are a couple of uh, lab experiments where what you do is you study the rock compressibility effect where you take the core sample you try to provide some excel and confining pressure and uh, based on that you try to inject the liquid and um, uh, what it happens like over the period of time when you keep in, keep on increasing the pressure uh, the the fluid from the core uh, pores will move out so we try to measure the bulk volume the change in the pore volume so this all combined together gives you uh, geomechanics uh, study which we call it mechanical earth model so it's more of a stress and strain axial stress and strain a lateral stress and strain which we take into the consideration there are soft fit for there but uh, we don't do it in kappa as of now as of now maybe in the near future yes we yeah. will we, <laughs> we, we would love to include that yes sure sir Yeah. So one is question for Manoj here. Yes, sir. Could you please walk us through the workflow of analyzing well test data for multilateral wells in a formation with heterogeneous permeability? I can always do it, Manoj. It's a, it's a, again uh, the workflow is the same. Uh, when I as I mentioned from uh, on the left panel, it's uh, you start with the loading the rate data, load the pressure data, you go with the derivative plot. but before we start this it's very important for us to understand what is the fluid that is in our reservoir because based on that uh, we have to define our pvt and what we use is basically there are different correlations like standing correlation is there bags and brills you must have studied it so it's, it's a long process heterogeneous reservoir again you can define uh, the reservoir uh, you can define the geology there is an option of doing so in kappa you can do it in sapphire as well you can define define different layers and you can define uh, properties specific to each layer and based on that you can do the analysis it's possible to do it again uh, while uh, you can get in touch with me uh, it's just a long workflow that we have to follow for that yeah but it's possible yeah our next question sir from mm -hmm. mohammad samir sik we can get data about formation damage by this software can we get formation damage uh, okay uh, formation damage again is something related to i would say um, uh, uh, mostly related to drilling whereas uh, where you try to understand uh, uh, you know what what has been the damage or what is your uh, 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 you know we call it polyaxial test is there but uh, with this uh, you can just get an idea near the well bore area how it is and if you go for the mini frac analysis then you can get an idea about the fracture propagation but not about the uh, formation damage i'm i'm not sure about it i'll have to check but uh, i'm not sure about it yes sir next no problem our next question sir Does sapphire works only with build-up test or other kind of well test as well? It works with every kind of test. So if you have drawdown, if you have injection test, and if you are injecting polymer, so we recently did a study for one of our clients. They were injecting polymers, and uh, they wanted to understand the behavior. It was a uh, very very heavy oil they have been producing from their field. So we did. You know, I mean, any type of test you can do it. Like either build-up injection, drawdown test, uh, mostly interference testing, whatever it is. So that is possible to do. Yes. Okay, sir. Our next question from Athar Bey: How the kappa useful for the person from geology field or geology background? Okay, that that's a very good question. So now uh, now is the time when uh, when I I won't say. uh different departments are not working together now gng uh, uh we do associate with uh, being uh, i cannot say that being a reservoir engineer i'll only look into the reservoir part but say for example if i'm doing a well build analysis and uh, if i happen to found my pressure derivative shows a certain kind of uh, boundary say if it's a parallel fault or something but you don't see that in your uh, seismic data so the first person i'll approach is uh, the geologist i'll ask him like you know this is my pressure at certain distance because we get to know after a certain distance i see the effect of boundary say it's 100 feet so i'll ask I'll, i'll go and meet my geologist and i'll explain him like you know this is the trend i'm getting 
this is the effect of fault this is the open boundary maybe if he had shown some fault but that fault can be transmissible right it can have 100% of uh, it can like it is not a ceiling fault so he must have shown it in the contour map but that it's a, it's a, it's a open fault my fluid is flowing from one point to the other point through that fault so we can know that using the build up analysis so i'll approach my geologist and then geologist will make the changes and uh, will make the changes in the geocellular model and based on that we'll do the future prediction so everyone is you know they work as a team so each of the work uh, has to be integrated now yes okay so our next question uh, one more thing so one more thing data type sorry uh, one more thing i would like to add like uh, when we talk about the hydrocarbon in plate so uh, the the thumb rule is the still valid method we use is the map based so volumetrics are calculated on based on the maps and when you load a contour map it's the geologist who is going to help you like how much is the volume so that you can do the analysis in rubus or maybe in topaz i just wanted to add this point so yeah okay sir our next question sir what is the main differences between kappa petrol and cmg what is the major innovation of kappa and what are the limits of kappa okay so these three are very different software you can compare uh, apples with the oranges so kappa uh, petrol and cmg are the numerical simulator but when i talk about kappa the rubis i i believe you were talking about rubis so rubis is basically a numerical model so as i mentioned during my session like you know when you have very limited data when it's not possible to use your petrol or uh, it's not possible to use cmg that's the place where i can use uh, rubis the limitations i have faced as of now is uh, it cannot handle a uh, <laughs> huge grid cells like uh, i have personally faced that problem so um, yeah i mean whenever i try to log millions of millions grid cells are there and if i want to do the simulation part of uh, if i want to do the analysis then rubis uh, somewhat it crashes but uh, due to the ongoing consortia we are working on it there has been a link between rubis and petrel we can uh, create a model in rubis and we can transfer it to petrel for uh, much deeper and detail analysis and uh, cmg as well so or uh, say for example if you are uh, you are from gng background and if you have made gng model using petrel or cmg you can load that data into rubis and do the analysis so it gives the reservoir engineers our upper hand because you know there are certain times uh, i'm pretty sure uh, you if you go to the well completion reports of uh, discovered small fields or very marginal fields you have absolutely no data so there are inconsistency with the within the results as well so that time you can rubis can be very helpful but the limitation again if you want to load thousands of wells i think rubis is not for that okay sir yes sir one next question sir yes. what are the data types opposite to dynamic data can you give some examples uh data types uh, okay and in, uh, in reservoir engineering part uh, what we basically focus on is uh, pressure and rate data these are very important for us and uh, whereas when you go towards the logging part you have last files so last files include information all the uh, all types of log gamma ray log neutron density log sonic log so there is nothing uh, the, like opposite to it but sometimes what they do is like say for example um, they won't give you flowing bottom hole pressure data they give you static bottom hole pressure data so using that static bottom hole pressure data is like it's almost like when the fluid is not moving so basically you can make a you can make a pressure gradient and you try to do estimate but mostly it's the pressure and uh, the rate data which is of importance now when we talk about high temperature and high pressure wells so temperature gradient data is also being measured now in most of the wells especially in india when you go towards rajamundri part where you have the huge hthp wells so we try to include the effect of temperature as well because if you are planning for any eor activity then you need to consider that but there is nothing like opposite to it i would say definitely sir our last question i think this will be yes Sir, is kappa workstation is beneficial in cell gas reservoir? 
Kapavuk uh, station is the what? Sen in beneficial in cell gas reservoir. So, um, I mean, do you mean we can use it for the shale gas or the shale oil? Yes, the answer is yes. If we want to use it for the shale gas or uh, shale uh, reservoir, so there are a couple of things. You have the adsorption phenomena that happens a lot. So whenever you define a project, you, you get that option. Uh, I don't have time, but I wanted to show one. Can I show something? I mean, if time versus like just two minutes. Yeah, you, sir, you can. I can? Right. Sure, sir, so, you can. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is Sapphire. When we start Sapphire, I'll just give you a quick introduction, like, you know, how we select uh, shale gas and shale oil, if you want to. So just, uh, it's going to be very quick. So basically, uh, what uh, when I think Manoj asked me this question, how is the workflow? I'll uh, I'll just quickly show it. I'll just take five minutes, not more than that. You can sir, you can sir. Uh, so I'll just take it. So this is how my projects look like when you start with blank, and uh, uh, this is uh, the reference time, which can be set as per the accordingly. So this is important when you have a tidal conversion as well. You have to take it. I tied into the consideration as well. So this is the units option. There are different units which can be taken. So if you're using oil field or SI, you can use it. So this is just like, you just have to click on it. Like SI, I just click SI and just load. When you click on next, so this is the point where I define my, uh, what type of test I'm doing, okay? When I talk about multi-layer, I just define multi-layer. I can just add different layers. I can add N number of layers. And then I define the well radius, I rock compressibility. Again, uh, someone who asked me the question about uh, the geomechanics. So this is uh, the, the value we can take and you can change the unit from here. And uh, again, now when we come to the single phase and multi-phase, so when we can select oil or gas, you can uh, select and uh, this is how the PVT looks like. So it's a, condensate or dry gas, wet gas, you define the reservoir pressure, temperature. If you want to include the effect of water, you can also include the effect of water. You can change the salinity, you can change the gravity and general. Uh, the gas properties can be changed from here. What is the specific gas gravity? And once you do it, you define okay. And you can see that my relative permeability is active and then consolidation and desorption. So this is used in your shale gas and shale reservoir. So you can use yes. it. So sure. this is this is like you have in built correlations, you can just use it. So you can see it like everything is just by clicking it. So whenever you are working on it, you just have to click and then when you go on next, just go on next and just, uh, these are the problem definition. You can allow it for non darcy flow and uh, immobile water if that more water is not moving, right? So you can do this and then uh, you just click on create. So your workflow will be created. So this is how workflow is created and then you start loading with your pressure and rate data. So you can see it, so th that's the workflow. So you can see, right, the, the rest of the icons are not active here. So have to load the rate data first and the pressure data and then you go for the extract option. Then everything will become active. So that was very quick. Yes, sir. So I think uh, there are no more questions from the participant. Okay. And so one question we have got like, uh, Mm -hmm. How can I get the training of this software? So soon we are going to launch this training also. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will update sure. you soon. You can sure. touch with me. And sure. uh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Nikhil. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Nikhil. And thank you, uh, Iktiar Alam. Uh, you guys have uh, really conducted it very well. And uh, thank you so much. And it was a pleasure talking to you guys. I hope you guys stay safe. All the very best. And uh, uh, just in case, uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn. We can be in contact. And if you have any more questions, just uh, reach out to me. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Yes, thanks to all for your valuable time and cooperation to make the event successful.
I, on behalf of the Petroleum Engineers Association, thanking Santanu Bridges, sir, and providing us from his very busy schedule, thanking him for his very informative and valuable presentation. Hope all of you have enjoyed this knowledge sharing session on Kappa Workstation. I am thankful to all for your active participation. I extend my big thanks to all my team members for their extensive support and especially Santanu sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I have a pleasure. All the very best, guys. Have a good all day, ahead, sir. You too. Have a nice day. Thank you. Please fall, fill the feedback form that will be marked as your attendance and uh, you will get the certificate of participation soon. And please be in touch so that we can give you more and more webinars like this. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day ahead.